And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Digital Ocean Tech Talk. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mason Egger, and I'm a senior, I can even say that, senior developer advocate here at Digital Ocean. And today we are going to be talking about Packer, Ansible, and building custom images on Digital Ocean, which will be a lot of fun. So, first off, let's say good morning to some people here in the chat. We had uh, Skay got here early, according to the timestamp, 36 minutes before. That's awesome. Karim also getting here a little bit early. Everyone's coming in. Michael's coming in from Denmark. Uh, Ron saying hello. Uh, Ivan thought he was the first comment, but was instead a fish, which is a carp. So, and Chris says hello. But good morning, everyone. Go ahead and tell me where you're coming in from. I like chatting with you all for a little bit. Before we get started, got to give a little bit of time for people to jump jump in, figure out we went live. Hunter says it's go time. Yes, it is. We're going to be doing some Packer stuff today, which is always fun. Uh, KF Chang says, hello. It's nice to meet you. Um, but yeah, today we are going to be talking about Packer so and Ansible and custom droplet images. So I'm going to go ahead and find the thing I'm looking for. <laughs> Ah, Chris is coming in from uh, Chicago. Hunter is from Beaverton. Okay, that's where that's literally where my 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 partner lives. I I visit there a couple times a year. I'm there, so like that's cool. First person I've ever seen that's from Beaverton. But yeah, I know where that. I know exactly where that is. Uh, Stefan here from the Netherlands. Hello. Is this Rhode Island, Yvonne? Yeah, the R.I. I'm, this is how you know I'm bad at things and when it comes to state initials. Freda from Texas. Awesome. I'm also coming here to you from the Austin, Texas area. I'm technically north of Austin, but I still consider myself an Austinite. Ivan from Venezuela. Andrew from Ottawa. Oh, that's going to be a word. Dimitro from Germany. Yeah, okay. Like it. Uh, Marcus coming in from Maine. Oh, it's bet it's cold up there. Uh, Spiralis from Greece. Welcome. Uh, Aras from Denmark, Idaho, been through Idaho recently. I like want I go on road trips. You will find me traveling the entire globe. Uh, Nick's coming from Thailand. Fabio says, hello. Welcome Fabio. Good to see you all. Okay. I'm gonna keep saying hello to some couple more people. We got Rohan from India. We have Mino from Madagascar. That's fantastic. Wow. Uh, Buenos Aires, awesome, Paraguay. I've done a couple of tech talks and like I did a couple of Oktoberfest events in Paraguay uh, a while back, and it was really fun. I like it. Um, you know, in Texas, I get I do a lot of stuff with like the all of the Latin America and Central America areas, and I love doing it with them. So uh, Fabio's from Brazil, Tang is from Singapore. Um, awesome. Well, looks like we got a good crowd here this morning. So let's go ahead and talk about Packer. So. First off, I'm well. Now I guess we're doing it here. Uh, Packer, and well, first off, let's talk about what we're gonna do. So we're gonna talk about building custom droplet images. So if you're used to the original droplet create, as you can see here, you know we have like Ubuntu, FreeBSD, and Fedora. You can then create, you know, put them in certain data centers, SSH keys, all that stuff. You know, this is our typical droplet. Then we have like container distributions, which is like Rancher OS. We have our marketplace images which are images that are already stood up. Um, uh, oops, my brain. Or they're already pre-configured, so I could just install WordPress and I'd have WordPress um, installed, and that's great. Docker, the same. But then we have this tab over here that's custom images. Um, and custom images are a little interesting because these are images that you can upload for yourself. Um, you, could, you can create an image and then do some configuration and upload it to DigitalOcean and then use it. And we're gonna use a tool called Packer that does it. Now Packer does it a little bit differently. There's what's known as custom images where you upload like a VHD or something like that. Um, and that can happen, but uh, Packer actually creates a snapshot and then you deploy from the snapshot. Essentially it's the exact same thing. Um, but let's go ahead and get into it. So for those of you that are unaware of Packer, Packer is a HashiCorp tool. Um, HashiCorp is one of my favorite companies. Like I do talk, talks on their technologies all the time. I, you, uh, if you've ever seen any of my Terraform talks, it's all by the same company that makes Terraform. Um, 
So Packer is used to build automated machine images. So whereas Terraform deploys images, Packer is a lot is used for more people to build custom things. You can build Docker images out of this. You can build any of the cloud provider images. So DigitalOcean is one of them. There's di many, many different plugins. Let's look at the, let's see what the plugins are. So there's just a lot of different provisioners or provisioners are how you can do it. So we could use Shell, we could use Ansible, which we're going to do today. Um, but we're going to just kind of go ahead and walk through Packer. And then after Packer, so Packer allows us to create an image and it has what are known as provisioners. Um, and provisioners are the way that you run the automation in the machine. So part of, we could just do it with Shell. Uh, Packer provides a, a Shell-based provisioner that allows you just to write bash and do it. But I like using Ansible for it. Definitely lets you like make more things, uh, you know, more in a more laid out way, makes it a little bit more dynamic, easier to use. But let me get you, tell you, nothing wrong with using good old Shell and bash for it. Um, we're going to go to Ansible documentation because I swear like the it's not the easiest thing to find on the first page, docs.ansible.com. So Ansible is a YAML-based uh, automation tool that allows you to basically statefully de declare how you want your, um, or not statefully, is it statefully? Is that the right word? That's the wrong word I'm thinking of. I can't think of the word I'm thinking of, which is a weird thing to say. Um, anyway, you can basically de declare it. If it's a declarative tool that allows you to basically to declare what you want this end state of the machine to look like, and it will work. So that's Ant Packer, that's Ansible. After we're done with that, we're going to go ahead. Now we're going to move into building an image with Packer. We're then going to configure our Ansible, our image with Ansible. We're going to use Packer and Ansible together to provision the image. And then we're going to deploy a droplet using this image. So let's go ahead and get started. And I need to move some stuff because I've got things on the wrong screen. Wee! And you, wee! Comes back over here. So today, let's go ahead and start about writing our uh, first Packer thing. So you, I'm going to just create a Packer file. I've already created it called myimage.pkr.hcl. This is an easy way to denote that this is a Packer image, and we're actually going to use it in Hash using the HashiCorp configuration language. So it will look very similar to what Terraform stuff looks like. You can define this as JSON. So Packer does support JSON syntax, um, but I'd rather use HCL. And I, I think that, you know, they spent all this time writing this amazing markup language for us. The least we could do is use it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say Packer, and we're going to basically say the required plugins... Ooh, make sure I have this right on my side. Huh. That's fantastic. We're going to see what happens. Required plugins. I think I just found an, my, my own error in my own code. Um, some reason here I have Docker. But that's interesting. I don't... Version equals greater than or equal to 1.0.0. .0 .0. Source equals github.com slash HashiCorp slash digital ocean. Now, the fun thing is, is that like we're not using Docker in any way, shape or form here. So why it says Docker is its own fun thing. So now we're going to have to go Google that. Packer. This is what happens when you copy paste and sometimes you miss something. Packer digital ocean. Should we have this right? Digital ocean builders. Oh, okay. So that, that variable that you put there is whatever you want to name it. So that's not like a, so I had Docker because I originally was messing around with this with the Docker provisioner. Um, I literally just call this digital ocean. It's fine. So this variable right here is just, it's a variable name. So I could have called it fluffy kittens and it wouldn't have made any difference. Um, so that explains why that was like that. So that's what happens. Sometimes I just like, well, why did I do that? So now we have our packer. Uh, provisioner. So now we're saying, hey, we want to use the DigitalOcean provisioner. So now what we do is we go into our directory and let's go ahead and say uh, packer init dot. It'll take a little bit. And if it comes back with nothing, I think that means that it is good, but let's also just make sure we're going to remove the packer so I might I might already have this cached on my machine. So let's just go ahead and remove Packer from under tilde slash dot config slash Packer. 
And let's do the Packer in it again. And now we wait. There it goes. So it's installing it into our config. So if there's one thing you're going to learn today about building images is that this is the part of the process that goes slow. So like when we build a Packer image, it might take like five minutes to build that droplet or the snapshot. That's just the nature of Packer. So as you can see, once I've done it in it, it comes in and it grabs the plugin and it installs it in .config so it knows how to provision DigitalOcean stuff. I keep always clicking on the wrong thing. So now that we have that, we need to go ahead and define a source. So I could, like right now, I could just run this and it would do nothing. But what now we have to do is we define a source. So the way that Packer can work, it has a lot of different ways it works, but the way that we're gonna use it today is you define a source image from your cloud provider. So from DigitalOcean, we're going to you know use our Ubuntu source. Um, so source digital ocean is like you have source digital ocean that's required. And this Ubuntu here is a variable. So you don't have to name it that I could have called it just my image Ubuntu. So, but this is basically kind of like how Terraform has like resource digital ocean dot something. This is the same thing with Packer. So source from digital ocean, and I'm going to just call it Ubuntu for our sake. We're going to use the Ubuntu dash 20 dash zero four dash x64 image if you ever need to get these slugs so like you ever need to know like where the slugs are i would recommend downloading the doctl command or the doctl command so doctl compute droplet uh actually i think it's just droplet compute size list so this will tell you the size of the droplets that are available and it basically just reaches out and makes an api call and pulls back all of the sizes that we have And now we wait. Actually, this is the size. So these are the sizes that we can pick. This is not the operating systems. So we're going to do uh, S1 vCPU 1 gigabyte. So how do I get the... Uh, I wonder what's it... We're going to guess and call it image list and see if that works. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them live. I have, I do, I do tend to like answer questions live. And in this this presentation, we're gonna have like some downtime like this, where we're waiting on commands to like execute, and this sometimes can take a little bit. Um, and Packer will go even slower. Another uh, resource you can use is slugs. Do API Dev. So distro images. Um, Ubuntu 20.04 right here. So that's how that's where I got that from. It does look like this. Uh, yeah, here now it's finally like given me these, but it doesn't give me the slug here. Doesn't look like. Ooh, that's a lot. No wonder that took so long. Interesting. Okay, so I would just use the slugs.doapi slugs.do-api.dev. It's a cool little tool. I would highly recommend. I'm gonna post it in the chat for those of you that need it. Um, cool little tool to help you find like all of these things. So now that we have that, let's go back here. So we're going to use an Ubuntu image. Uh, we're going to pick a region. So this is, uh, where you basically, whatever region you choose to create these, these in, that's the only region that it can be deployed to. So if I want to deploy something in SFO three, which is one of our newer data centers, I'd want that region. Um, and then if you end up wanting to build it in multiple regions, you'd either have to build it again, or you can also copy snapshots and images across regions. Um, the size is S dash, which stands for stand standard, I think, one V CPU dash one gigabyte, one GB. So that's the size we're gonna use. Our SSH username that we're going to use to actually like connect to this is root. This is the, um, basically how it will connect. And because uh, what Packer does when it provisions is it basically just SSHs in and runs commands and it needs to know who to do that as. So because the username is root because that's the default user on these images. If you were using another provider or anything that had a different username, you would have to use that. Um, and then the snapshot name is pretty cool. So you can name your snapshot and we're going to call these dev in and then I'm going to do some like interpolation stuff here 
format date yyyy dash mm dash dd comma hh colon mm colon timestamp. This is why we use the HashiCorp language because they have all these built-in functions that can just be interpolated in. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create a developer environment. So there's a lot of reasons why you may want to create these custom images. You may have like a fleet that, you know, you auto automatically are scaling up and scaling down and you want to add images to this Nomad nodes, Kubernetes nodes, that's a good reason. Um, you may just want to use this to be able to quickly deploy a certain asset. Like maybe you have a complex deployment of a web server and you want to be able to just deploy that really quickly or, uh, you know, again, scale up really quickly. You just deploy a couple more, add the tags and boom, it's behind the load balancer. Or you just don't want to always have to automate everything. Like, or you want to be able to have something ready to go and not have to um, automate it for uh, something else. And that's one of the reasons why you could do it. I, what we're going to do is we're going to automate our developer environment. Uh, Howard asks in the chat, can we use non-digital ocean images? I don't know if Packer allows you to use ISOs. Let me Packer source ISO. Let me see if it does. VirtualBox builder. Kind of looks like it could. Okay. So it looks like with the VirtualBox provider, you could. So like I said, there's two ways you can create custom images on DigitalOcean. There is using a predefined image and then doing it like this. And this will create a snapshot. And then what you can do with another way is you can upload your own VHD. And then you could use VirtualBox Builder and still use Packer. Um, basically get the ISO URL and the, and all of that, you would build the image locally on your machine with VirtualBox. Then you would upload the VirtualBox image to, um, you would upload the VirtualBox image to DigitalOcean and, uh, Karim completely says it. This would be tricky and we would require some doing because there are certain things that are installed on cloud images that, that happen. So that way you can, um, so that way that they run in the cloud, like you can't just upload an ISO to the cloud and have it work. It actually won't on any major cloud provider, um, unless they do some stuff on the back end. But I think in our digital ocean documentation, we actually talk about it a little bit. So yes, you can upload VH, VDI, VMDK, VHDX, QCOW2, or a raw dot image. Um, and it says here, like these things have to have Images must have SSHD installed so things can run. You must install cloud in it. You're limited to ext3 or ext4 file systems. The image must be a certain size. So you could use Packer to build a custom image that would like maybe create a VHDX or something like that in VirtualBox, and then you could upload it. But then you have to follow this documentation, which I think is in our um, is in our is in the Tech Talk page. But I will also add it. Now, what we're doing today is by using one that's already provided, which this is just a base Ubuntu 2004 image. So if you're just looking for modern stuff, you have no reason to use the ISO. But this is just the base 2004 image. This will allow us to just do it and use a droplet during creation, which is really cool. Um, and the difference is, is that instead of it being a custom image, it goes in as a snapshot. But they're treated the same. They work the same. They do the same thing. So, okay, we have that. Let's go ahead and do a build. So we're going to go ahead and do a build. We're going to call this, I don't know, we'll call it my developer environment. And then we're going to say, which sources do we want to build for? We're going to say source.digitalocean.ubuntu. Oh, I just understood something that I didn't even understand earlier. So we're, we're this is linking back up here to the source. Wow. Okay. So I've been working, like, this is something I haven't dealt with in a long time. I was in charge of Packer images at my last job. And I completely thought this was something specific and it's not, it's referencing up here. So I could just build in any thing. I will say some of this documentation on this stuff is not that great. And I'm probably going to write a couple tutorials on it. Um, and I'm going to talk to the editorial team after this because I really want to now. No, I want to. Yay. Um, but anyway, this source, it's a weird morning. I had too much caffeine. Um, this source right here references back up here and says, Hey, I want to use this source. I want to use this image use it and that's fine and then we have provisioners provision or sometimes it's hard to say and there are that doesn't even look like i spelled it right let me make sure 
P-R-O-V-I-S-I-O-N-E-R. Okay. So we're going to start off with a shell provisioner. And let's just do something really, really simple. So let's let's demonstrate some environment variables. So we'll say environment vari vars. So I can set environment variables during this time, and these also can be used as dynamic variables. So I can I can interpolate like kind of how I did up here. I can cre create variables that are like in my local environment, maybe passwords or something, instead of hard coding them in here, and then I could build them and embed them into the machine. So environment vars, we're going to just say foo equals hello world. That works for that. And then we're just going to do some inline, which is basically just inline commands. Echo, adding file to Docker container. And we're not going to see Docker container. Adding file to system. I don't know why I have that as Docker container in here. Echo foo is dollar foo example.txt end quote okay so this is a custom packer build right now so basically we're going to take an ubuntu image and we're going to set an environment variable in it really quickly and then we're going to run some code that basically just adds a file so now let's go ahead and build this file so we just come back to our command line and we say packer build dot Oop, looks like I have a boo-boo. Uh, expected a comma to mark the beginning of the next item. Ah, okay. Yeah, inlines have to have commas here. Unsuspected argument. Argument named source is not expected here. Do you, I mean sources? Okay, first off, what line is that on? Line 20. It is sources. Eh. Sources. DigitalOcean Ubuntu. This is what happens when I can't even read my own writing. And yes, this is this is built. This is being recorded. So it will be on the YouTube channel after this. So now I'm doing a Packer build. And it's going to... And we can actually go into my cloud console, which is in one of these 900 million tabs that I have open. Where'd it go? Come here, little cloud console. Okay. So as you can see, there is a droplet being spun up right now. Like this droplet is actually being brought online. Let's do this so you can keep an eye on it. So it's spinning up a droplet. It's spinning up an Ubuntu server with the same size that I specified. And once this server is active, which it just became active, um, Packer on this side is going to start running basically the commands, and then it's going to take a snapshot of this, and it's going to upload it to DigitalOcean. Actually, the snapshot will happen locally, so it's not like doing the snapshot on my machine. It's happening on the cloud. Okay. There it goes. Okay, so we see that it's there. We can't really read that in this format. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. So it provisioned the shell with the script, it created a, it's creating a snapshot. Um, now it's waiting for the snapshot to compete complete and it's gracefully shutting down the droplet. So if we go back to this, this droplet is going to be shut down and then deleted. I guess actually is it, oh no, it's going to create it. So it, it shuts down the snapshot and the droplet, then it creates the snapshot, then it, cause you, it's good to create the snapshot after you have, um, shut down the droplet and then the snapshot will be uploaded. So we're now we're just waiting. And this is a part of building. Like if you ever get into the point where you're doing builds on infrastructure and stuff like this, part of your life is sitting here waiting on the tools to go. These tools do not run in a hurry. Like, you know, this is the, that, that XKCD about, you know, the two people messing around and like, what are you doing? Oh, we're waiting on our stuff to compile. It's the same thing here in build land. Um, I used to have a build process at my previous job that literally would take like 45 minutes. So like we would go to lunch, we would, we would start a build and we would go to lunch and we would come back and the build would be done. It was pretty nice. So, and sometimes it won't, it, okay, there we go. It was removed. So we're making some progress. Okay. So the artifacts successfully built dev 2020, 11, 10 at 1622, which I guessing it's using UTC time. 
So now if I go to droplets and I go to create a droplet, I see snapshots have arrived here. So this wasn't here earlier. If you look back into this video, this wasn't here. And then now we have our Ubuntu dev. We can just click on it. We're just going to use a slightly bigger droplet. We're going to put it only in SFO3 because it's not there. So if you want it there, you're going to have to move it somewhere else, which is totally fine. Uh, we have our home desktop. or That's all of that stuff. It doesn't matter. We're going to create one of these droplets. Uh, Malcolm asks, can you use VMware virtual images? You can use them for Packer, and then you have to upload them. But again, uh, I think as I I'll, as I said earlier in the talk, um, you have to go, you have to, would have to check out our custom documentation on custom images and make sure you install cloud in it. Make sure that you're you know having SSHD properly configured and all of that stuff. Maybe one day I'll do a talk on that, like building one in VirtualBox. That seems like the scariest live demo to ever give, though, because there's so much that could go wrong with that. Um, just because there's so many different pieces, uh, and live demos, the more pieces you introduce, the more likely they are to completely fail on you. So we've created a dev environment copy of our droplet out of this snapshot. As you can see, who is hello world? Our example text file is here. So this seems like, you know, probably not really worth it on this level. Like, you know, if you're only going to do like one thing, you might just be better off using a cloud init data. But what if you want to do a lot of stuff to your image? What if you want to configure it? Well, you could write a lot of shell scripts. Um, that always is an option. But we have another tool at our disposal and Packer already has a built-in provisioner for it. And that is Ansible. So for those of you that are unaware of Ansible, we have some really cool... Um, resources here. DigitalOcean has this how to manage ser remote servers with Ansible. But Ansible is a just a declarative management system that allows us to say, hey, I want these things done. Do them for me. And it does it. Um, Erica is a, was a great colleague of mine. Um, and this ebook is fantastic. So always feel free to go and check out this ebook on how to manage remote servers. If you want to know more about Ansible, today we're just going to dive into a little bit of Ansible. So let me pull up my notes. And this is where it gets fun because now we're going to see if I will have the ability to write valid YAML uh, without any mess ups. Because if those of you that watched my last uh, tech talk where I messed up the GitHub image thing, it's because I can't write valid YAML. <laughs> So anyway, let's go ahead and do our provision. So we're going to basically, we can call this whatever we want. I'm going to just call it provision image. The hosts, we're going to set the default. This just means like use the host that this is, that we run this in. Um, we're not really going to have to worry. Like Ansible has a lot of things about like which host to run it on and stuff. Because we're doing this with Packer, we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Like inventories and stuff like that. None of that matters in this thing because Packer is going to run it, knows how to run Ansible for us. We're going to say become true. So become an Ansible is a um, is a keyword that allows us to basically change our identity. So some of these things we're going to want to run as root, but there are going to be a couple of commands that I'm going to want to run as another user, as we'll see here in a second. So let's do that. So let's define our tasks. The first task I'm going to do is I want to install a couple of things. So we're going to do add HashiCorp key. I'm, I'm a big Terraform developer. I use a lot of Terraform. Um, we're going to say APT key. So we're going to add an, an, a key. So these are the little commands, and this is the way Ansible runs. Is you can name what you're going to do. It's going to show up. APT key is one of the Ansible commands. So let me just Google it. like So, so if I ever want to know, like, how do I add a new repository with Ansible? So uh, APT repository add Ansible. That's exactly how I would Google it. And I have this docs.ansible.com and they usually show up. It's ansible.builtin.apt repository. Now this one's a little bit weird <laughs> because, and I don't know, actually I'm curious, do they have it? I don't. I don't know why there's not a documentation here. If you just try to add the repository and you don't add the key, it fails in miraculous ways that are very difficult to debug. Um, so if you're going to add something, add the key to. So we're going to, I'm going to just copy and paste this URL. 
URL is HashiCorp. So if you don't know that HashiCorp now, basically you can just download their tools from their website and use um, like just move the Go binary because all the HashiCorp tools are binary except for Vagrant. That one's still written in Ruby. Um, but they actually now maintain releases for the operating system. So you can do update and like that's 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 nice. And then we're going to say state present. So this is a sample of like just a simple HashiCorp thing. Or sorry, Ansible uh, thing. What is the name? Like this is the name that will show up in your log. This is what you're doing. This is whatever you want to say. So I'm going to add the HashiCorp key. Um, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to use the provisioner apt underscore key, which and you just have to figure out to new. I would just Google how to add a key in Ansible. You give it the URL and you tell it the state present. It will do all the checking for you, all of that stuff. It's pretty awesome. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and add the repo. So add HashiCorp repos, APT repository, which is the one I just Googled. Repo, and I'm, again, I'm going to copy this because I am not going to do this by hand. Um, Oh yeah, this is 20, so this should be focal. Is that right? Looks like I have all of these indented like a lot. I swear I, I mess up YAML so bad sometimes. I just cap copy this whole thing. What how does it indent it? Ew. I don't think it needs two indents. We're going to go back to one. I think this is just weird, but we will see if it messes up. I if at the end of this, this doesn't work. I have a working copy in GitHub. I will download it and make it work. So we're going to add the repo and we're going to say state present. So this state present is what basically says, Hey, do I want it here? Yes or no. And you can change the state. So state present means make sure it's here. And then there's one that's like, make sure it's not here. If you wanted to uninstall something, um, So before we move on, let's go ahead and answer a couple questions. So, uh, so you would use the shell provisioning and Packer for easy stuff or not at all, or, and you prefer Ansible for provisioning hundred percent. I do not have to use Ansible. Do not. I could use shell stuff. I like Ansible. This was an opportunity for me to kind of show you that you can use chef or Ansible, but there's a lot of other provisioners as well. So 100%, you could just ignore the rest of this talk if you don't want to do any Ansible stuff, but I do want to show you because it's really cool that like Packer knows how to run Ansible for you. Um, and it knows how to run Chef and Puppet as well. So like if you have like your favorite configuration management tool, Packer can do it for you. Um, yes. Can you reference DigitalOcean droplet image like a data source? I don't know if you can get stuff out of it like a data source. Because it really just runs this runs the thing and I don't know if you, it just runs it and then you just perform things on. So I don't know if you can. Um, yes, YAML is not human readable. I do not care what anyone says. I I can write I can write JSON way quicker and easier than I can write YAML. I, I get into fights with YAML all the time. So this is how we make sure we have the repo and then we're going to install some packages. But there is one thing that I, and I, I if I had time, I would purposely make the mistake and then ex and fix it. But I'm not going to do that today. Because I don't have the time. Um, because we were got like 20 minutes left. So one of the things that I have to do at the very beginning is I have to put in a, a artificial pause. So when as at least for Ubuntu. Um, so we're gonna call it initial pause to let Ubuntu finish unattended updates. So Packer's fast, okay? Like it doesn't wait. And what I have what I have run into with this is as soon as Ubuntu comes online, it starts doing an unattended updates for the first time. This gets a lock on the APT key. Like the, AP, the APT lock happens. And then as soon as I start trying to do add HashiCorp stuff here, like in trying to use it, I run into the lock and it breaks and I can't use it. And I've like, I've messed around with it. I just put in an artificial weight of, hey, wait a minute. Okay. Like just wait a minute. And once that's done, I haven't had any problems with it yet. So... Welcome to the land of systems where you make stuff up for the fun of it. So I think what I'm going to do for the sake of time is I'm going to copy and paste a lot of this stuff and then I'm just going to explain it. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to install some packages. And this is an example of using a kind of looping mechanism in 
to in uh, Ansible. So name, install packages, but all of this is out because the bloody thing. See YAML, YAML copy pasting messes up. So basically we're going to install packages, APT, and we're going to say state present, update the cache. And then we put this thing in items. And this is just a default thing with an Ansible. And then we say loop and Nginx, ZSH, Terraform, and Python 3-VN. Because these are the kind of things that I would like to have installed on my developer environment as I'm working on it. I love using ZSH. I'm a Terraform person. Python 3, VN, and then just Nginx because I just can. So after that, we're going to go ahead and just... I'm going to copy and paste the rest of it. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. And we'll just, hopefully it works. Ooh, that doesn't look like it's in the right spot. Come on. Yeah, like that's in the wrong. And then all of this is in the wrong. Okay. And then this needs to go back one like that. Oh, oh, that's a good, good thing. Interesting. I've always seen it done that way, but that's interesting to know. I learned things too from y'all. So, um, I will not t tell you that I am a, uh, <laughs> that I am an Ansible expert. I've just used it a little bit. Um, yeah, if you're worried about speed, then maybe you should look into how to do it without loops. For this presentation, I'm just going to stick with it. I don't know if it updates the app cache four times. I'm hoping that it just does it once. If it doesn't, that would be some kind of silly... Like, you would think that it would have the logic to, like, update. If you say this, do it at the very beginning, and then don't do it again. So, anywho. Next, we're going to download Golang from Go, and we're going to put it in slash temp. We're going to extract the tarball. Um, and unarchive it and move it to user local. I'm going to create a user called MM Egger. Oh, is it with items? Oh, hey, I'm learning stuff. Uh, adding MM Egger is a user. Uh, basically, this is my username that I want to use. I'm going to create my .ssh directory so that way it is present. I'm going to install oh my zsh as MM Egger. So this is a fun one. So like these are all just different commands that you can Google. Like I can just create a directory, but I can, this is where I become, this is where the become part is useful is I'm going to do, do we allow this command to change users and who do you want this user to execute as? I want Mason's oh my ZS to have oh my ZSH, but not root. So we're going to become Mason's user, my user, and we're going to just run this command and we're going to do the same commands otherwise. So like what we're going to do is we're going to um, use that we're going to get a git repo, which is, has my dot files in it. These are just my personal dot files. We're going to clone them into this destination. And then I'm just going to copy them out into my home directory. So that way they're already there and set up. And that is the bulk of the Ansible. Now the question is, is there like an Ansible validate command? <laughs> validate command. It's a good thing to validate playbook it's so just ansible playbook double dash oh did i accidentally close that okay cd code mason knows tech talk so do i have even have do i even have ansible installed I do good ansible playback double dash check uh playbook yaml double dash check Line nine, column five, we have a problem. This has to be, no, that looks right to me. Oh, this is why I do not like writing YAML. Let me check my personal version of it. That sh huh. 
this pause have to be indented? Because nothing else is indented. See, like, and this works. It did work. Let's try an indent and let's see what happens. And if it still complains, no, it's just cranky. Okay, I'm going to try actually just running the packer command and see if it doesn't, if it works. And if it doesn't work, we're going to copy and paste because I'm not going to sit here. Oh, I don't have the... One second. I have to export my token. Packer build dot... I missed a dash. Did I? Where did I miss a dash? So I have like name, name. There's one too many spaces there. That might be it. That the add HashiCorp key, which would explain why it was cranky right here. Let's check the Ansible. I can do an Ansible playbook check while I'm waiting on Packer. Okay, I'm just going to let that be whatever it's going to be. I've actually never run this one locally. I've only ever run it inside of Packer. And if it doesn't work, I will literally copy and paste from over here. Oh, it doesn't even matter. I'm so silly. I'm sorry. Ah, it doesn't even matter. I didn't even tell Packer to use it yet. So, there we go. This is exactly what it came as out of my out of my GitHub repository where this actually works, and out of curiosity. Oh, look, it did work. <laughs> this is what happens when you try to write YAML live, which I just find hilarious because I can do so much stuff perfectly fine, but apparently writing YAML, nope, not going to happen live. That's irritating. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the provisioners now. Come on. Playbook. No, not you. I have to get my my notes back. So instead of using the shell provisioner, which I don't really want to use anymore, I'm just going to delete it. And I'm just going to say provisioner going to be Ansible. And we're just going to say the playbook file is our local playbook YML. And then what I can do here, and I'm going to comment this out because it creates an absolute mess, but I want to show it to you, is if there's any extra arguments you want to run with this, you are 100% you are able to run that. You can also run multiple provisioners. So maybe you want to do a little bit with the shell, and you want to do a little bit with Ansible. Um, totally up to you. You can run multiple provisioners here. So this is just going to run our Ansible playbook, and let's see if I have... Okay, that's good. It's, it's done. Make sure I didn't leave a mess in my. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, um, there must be an ambulance going by. I can hear my dog howling. Okay. So now let's just go ahead and do a packer build dot. And it's going to build that. And we will eventually see a droplet appear right here. And now it's going to run all of this. And it's basically just going to sit here, wait for the droplet to become active, and run the Ansible playbook. So I'm going to go back through and look at some of the text that is here, uh, some of the chat. So I'm apparently going to need to look at the with items thing, which makes sense. It's been a minute since I've used Ansible. Either way, it will work. It may just be a little bit slower. So, uh, being declarative, you would say Ansible is more maintaining than issuing shell commands, right? Also, I yeah, I hate YAML. Um, I'm trying to think about that. I would say yeah, it's it's pretty nice to have Ansible be able to do a lot of this stuff for you. Um, it makes life just a little bit easier, but it. What is that noise? But it really is just a preference. Like, I don't know. I would rather write more Ansible and like use the provisioners and stuff than write a whole bunch of like shell scripts, but that's just me. Um, but if you're if you if you're like a, a shell wizard and that's the thing you can totally do, go with it. Um 
I have no idea about data sources in Packer. That's an interesting one. Uh, cool. HCP Packer. If you want a more expansive image history. Is that like the cloud version? Like HCP Packer? Like HashiCorp cloud product? I think they do that with like Vault and stuff. I haven't even looked at that yet. But pretty interesting. So as you can see, it's going through and it's doing all of the stuff. It made its initial pause. It added the HashiCorp key. It's adding the repos now. So the little cow comes up and tells you everything that it does as it's doing it. So this is all being run locally, or this is all being run on the droplet with inside of it. And once it's done running all of this, we will be good. So it's telling me what, what items it's installing. And now that I'm looking at this, yeah, this is probably slowing it down with the loop. Because I remember whenever I used to install this at my first job, I haven't actively written any Ansible in probably like four years. It used to always just come up as like one giant list of what it installed. So the fact that it's here. Uh, think of it as more of an image registry with visibility into the metadata. Building still happens wherever your security posture records. That's pretty cool. I haven't had a lot of time to look at the HashiCorp cloud products. While we're waiting, let's look at let's look up HCP Packer. Like, might as well. I didn't even know they had announced this. When did they announce? Oh, I'm behind. Packer is not the HashiCorp product that gets all the love. Let's be honest. Like, it's one of my favorite products because I love building images, but it doesn't get a lot of loving. Um, so yeah, it allows you just to create. Oh, it allows you just to create a whole bunch of registry images, like you like he said with metadata. Images are built in many stages. It can be tough to try to figure out which image was built from what. You can end up with complex dependency trees that you need to tease apart and then keep each state. This is how HCP Packer Registry can help. Track image dependencies, that's useful. We're doing some relatively basic image stuff, but like image dependencies can totally, yeah, 100% agree. Packer deserves all the love. It is the unsung hero, uh, I think. But, you know, not a lot of people have to build custom images. Like, it's a it's a thing. So, I'm going to have to play with this now. This looks fun. I'm trying to do more DevOps tech talks. So, if you like these kind of tech talks, please let me know. Because, as y'all, if you've watched my tech talks before in the past, you know that, like, sometimes I do, like, Python talks and stuff. And, like, last time I did a Golang CLI talk. And this is me kind of giving back into, like, DevOps talks and stuff. And I haven't given any of these in a while. Okay, so it looks like everything successfully completed, which is good. Um, and now we're just waiting on the image to finish. Like, finish the snapshot. Which can take a little bit of time. Do, do, do. Oh, while we're waiting, for those of you that don't know, DigitalOcean is having its deploy conference next week. Um, so for those, if you do Kubernetes or any sort of business type stuff and you want to come and learn about it from our amazing group of people, the virtual conference for global development teams is next week. And let's look at the agenda. Five days. Uh, we have our keynote, Kim. If you've ever never seen Kim do a presentation on here, you're missing out, but she's talking about three ways uh, to spin up a virtual Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we're going to have one on building a scalable virtual classroom on DO. I am going to look into that. Zero to three million deployments, scaling app platform on Kubernetes. If you're an app platform customer, it's all built on Kubernetes. If you want to hear about Kubernetes at scale, it's going to be pretty cool. Bootstrapping Kubernetes, cloud mindset, cloud native businesses, um, Adoption for Kubernetes. Now, the interesting thing is that, like, these are going to be in different time zones in certain parts. Interesting. So, like, 11.17, these are going to be in the APAC EMEA time zones, whereas on the first day, 11.16, it's going to be in the America time zones. So, it looks like if I want to watch any of these talks, I'm going to have to get up really early to get to watch them, but I'm definitely going to look into them. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Deploy, it's a free conference. Please register for it. And that was the perfect amount of time to segue into our image being done. Okay, so now let's go to... I keep losing that cloud image. Like, I keep bringing... Where does it keep going? 
this is what happens when you open up like 400 million things and then you can't find anything and you're like, where did it go? And, and I guarantee you I'll find it after the fact and I'll have like 400 of these open. Okay, back to my projects. So let's go ahead and create a droplet. So there is one thing that I was trying to do, but I'm going to have to do the, with this. And we're, ooh, it's the 1643 one. Make sure you delete these if you're not using them. Um, cause they, I think that you do get charged for snapshots, like a certain amount per gigabytes. So we're going to do San Francisco three, but we're going to do, you do some user data and this is where cloud and it's going to come in and help us with something. So as you saw in my code, I created the MM Egger user, but that user doesn't have my SSH keys at all. Like I don't, I can't see them. So what we're going to do is, um, we're going to go ahead and copy those keys, authorized keys from root and into me. So we're going to cp slash root slash dot ssh authorized underscore keys to slash home slash m m egger slash dot ssh slash authorized keys. And if you get this wrong, it doesn't work, and then you're angry. And then we're going to ch own mm egger colon mm egger slash home. We're going to do the same thing here. So this is basically just going to be a little bit of cloud in data. So this is like the last step. If you wanted to be able to deploy something and like you needed to inject some variables or some SSH keys or any of that, the last minute you can use this user data and just write some raw bash. You also could completely ignore everything that we've done today and just write it in the raw bash itself. However, this is going to take a little bit of time because it has to do all of that work that we just did, which is non-trivial. So if you need to be able to spin these up quickly, it's good to do it, you know, and build an image for it. So we have our SSH keys and let's go ahead and create our developer environment. And hopefully I got that right. If I didn't, we just log in as root and fix it. But like, I wanna be able to log in as MM Egger. Ah, Nick says it was excellent last time. Totally check out deploy. Thanks, Nick. It was, it is pretty fun. They're really awesome. And there's gonna be some, there's always some cool stuff. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So now we just wait on the droplet to spin up, which will happen relatively quickly now. Whenever you're ready, droplet. There it goes. Those couple seconds can feel like a millennia. But let's try SSHing as MM Egger and hopefully all of our stuff worked. Yes. Oh, I messed up the thing. <laughs> it happens. Or actually, let's give it a minute. There it goes. So cloud in the data, like I said, a little bit slow, a little bit behind the the pace. Um, so you might have to worry, like, so you might have to wait like a little bit. The cloud in the data had just finished. So this is my thing. Like I have my dot files. As you can see, I'm running my oh my zsh. Terraform is installed by default. Like my developer environment is ready to go. I have a working developer environment. We built it with Packer. Let's go ahead and do a, a quick recap. So we built a Packer file, which as you can see, it's 28 lines of code with a couple of comments. These extra arguments will just make it, but you know, take your Packer, basically pick which image you want to build as your base. Tell it, Hey, use Ansible, then build out a playbook of, excuse me, all the things you want to do. So go your user, create mmegger.ssh, all of that stuff. Do it, build it, upload it, and then now you have droplets that are ready to go at your leisure. That is all I have for today. This code, I'm going to do it right now. Get status, get add dash a, get commit dash s dash m, uh, finished tech talk. This code is now live on my personal demos repo. So let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of things that I do in GitHub. Um, so I, Mason Egger, like for those of you that have watched my tech talk before, this is all the code that I like, work on, but I now have Mason Egger demos, which is where all of my sample code goes. 
So if you're ever look, if you've ever watched any of my tech talks, if you find my tech talks on um, YouTube or anything like that, all of the sample code is now put into this repository. So that way it's just easier to find. And this is the repository that has the Packer image, that has the playbook, the agenda. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the chat. So if you want to be able to do this, you can 100% start using this exact thing today. Um, all you would have to do is download Packer and install Ansible, which are... There, there's documentation on their websites. Um, are there any questions about anything before I go? I've got about five minutes left that I can answer for questions. Um, and I'm happy to do so. But yeah, I'm going to open it. I'll open up the floor to questions real quick. I'm glad you enjoyed the webinar, Stefan. These are some fun things. This is... I would say that like using Packer and stuff like this, it's a little bit, I'm not going to call it advanced, but like this isn't something I would do for my personal projects unless I was just really nerding out. This is something that I would, I would use Packer. Like I used Packer at my last job. I worked as a site reliability engineer for a company. Um, and we, my team managed a very large platform as a service and we stood up thousands of, of uh, EC2 instances that ran basically our giant Mesos and Nomad clusters and we used Packer to build the custom AMIs so that way whenever we stood them up, we didn't have to wait forever for them to get provisioned and have all the software installed. Like we were ready to go. We still did a little provisioning after standup, but like the things that we knew that we could get away with not needing to do a fresh install all the time, it was better to just do it like that. So like I would definitely say that Packer using this kind of technique is for like when you have production systems and you're trying to save time. Um, it's also about having... Repro like reproducible code, you know, Ansible and Packer. And then what you can do is you can pair this with Terraform, which I didn't even get to today, but I now have this and I have the snapshot ID that is created. I can then use that snapshot ID with my Terraform to spin up images and manage my infrastructure as code using my snapshots. Um, the HashiCorp ecosystem is amazing like that. The more stuff you use, the better your experience is. It's like Apple. I hate to say it, but it's like Apple. Um, like if you just have an iPhone, it's great. You kind of like your iPhone. When you get the watch, you're like, wow, these things work well together. And then you get the laptop and then they work well together. And like, as you give yourself into the ecosystem, the more, the better your stuff gets and the more fun you have. And it's the exact same way with the HashiCorp tools. Um, the more you use, the more you're going to enjoy them. And then you use them all and you just become a fanboy like me. So anywho, it doesn't look like I'm getting any questions. So I have to run to another meeting. But I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to play a quick final video. Last shout out for Deploy. R Register for free. RSVP today. Thank you everyone for attending and I will see you next time.